Yeah, hello everyone and welcome to this uh, uh, heat transfer lab and the experiment that we are going to have a look at today is uh, the plate and uh, frame heat exchanger. Uh, so we'll be doing a quick demo, we'll go into a lot of details of the setup in uh, further parts of today's uh, demo. So you may have seen other kinds of heat exchangers in your heat transfer classes. Typically we uh, learn a lot about shell and tube heat exchangers. Today what we are going to look at is a different version. This is called a plate and frame uh, heat exchanger. Uh, out here in front of me we have uh, an example of a commercial plate and frame heat exchanger. Uh, the experiment will be done on a unit very similar to this but much scaled down in size uh, which is connected to all uh, various kinds of lines. Now this uh, uh, plate and frame heat exchanger belongs to a class of exchangers known as compact heat exchangers and they have certain uh, pros and cons and used in special uh, duties and we'll uh, talk more about that shortly. So this is our uh, experimental scaled down plate and frame heat exchanger. Uh, so have a look at this unit. Essentially what you have is a number of heat transfer plates. Uh, they are held together by these bolts which are under tension which keeps the gaskets uh, seated and nothing leaks out. Uh, one side of the heat exchanger has absolutely no connections for fluids. All the connections are on a single side of the heat exchanger which makes it quite convenient. Now there are going to be two fluids, a hot fluid and a cold fluid for all heat exchangers. And if you look at the labels, you can see that the, in, the inlet for the cold fluid is on the bottom left. The outlet for the cold fluid is on the top right. On a similar basis, the uh, hot fluid comes in on the bottom right and exits on the top left. And this is how in this particular design, we have the rough equivalent of counter current flow. If you look at the ports out here, you also have certain transducers or sensors out here, which are basically measuring the temperatures for both the hot and cold fluid. So now let us trace the fluid flows. So let us start with the uh, inlet of the hot fluid and figure out where this hot fluid is getting generated, right? So if you trace the lines down here, you see a metal reservoir hmm? and this is where the hot fluid is getting heated. And if you look at this reservoir, it has an electrical heating connection. You have certain ports on the top uh, for adding the liquid, uh, which is the hot liquid. You also have certain safety devices, a level indicator, and this is going to be the reservoir from where the hot fluid is circulated using a circulating pump. So once the hot fluid is heated up, we need to have a way of circulating it through the plate and frame heat exchanger. Uh, what you see out here are the circulation lines and note that these are insulated lines because it's a hot fluid. Uh, we have a circulating pump. After the pump, we have these two devices and these are called rotameters. Uh, you use these devices to measure the flow rate. Uh, pay attention to how a rotameter works, what kind of float, um, uh, what are the uh, scales and ranges on the rotameter. Uh, and uh, we have one for the hot fluid and another for the cold fluid. I didn't go into the generation of the cold fluid because in this case the cold fluid is going to be water. So we have connections which just draw in water from the tap water supply and you don't really have an independent pump because the pressure of the supply serves to circulate the uh, cold water through the system. Now let's come to the control panel which is sort of the brain of the unit and this is where you're going to take all your measurements and readings. Now if you look at the control panel, it's split into two halves. On the left hand side, you have measurements for the hot fluid which is being circulated and on the right side, you have measurements for the cold fluid which is water in this case. Of course, the fluid has an inlet and an outlet and hence you have four displays which are basically reading temperatures from the sensors that I showed you earlier. Also, there is, there is a main switch and a control which allows you to uh, control uh, the pumping uh, speed of the pump which is in the setup and that gives you a certain degree of control on the hot fluid and you will be varying this in the experiment in order to get various uh, readings. And the whole point behind this experiment is to uh, take different data points by varying the flow rate uh, of the hot fluid. So as you vary the flow rate, the temperatures of inlets, outlets are going to change uh, and you will take a certain number of readings based on time and in consultation with your TAs. Uh, typically, we want statistically significant data, so you will take multiple readings. Also, there can be a certain amount of hysteresis and hence we normally prefer to take one set of readings in the increasing direction uh, and another set of readings uh, in the uh, decreasing uh, direction. Now let's see some more details of the plate and frame heat exchanger. So out here I have a demonstration unit which is not connected to all the lines to make things more visible. 
So if you see one backing plate, you have four connections here. So uh, there are two ports out at the top and another two at the bottom. Uh, we'll come to how you can connect the plates to various hot or cold uh, uh, headers in order to get different kinds of flow patterns such as counter current, co current, etc. This other side of the heat exchanger doesn't really have any piping connections, but what you see is several bolts out here. And the function of these bolts is to keep enough of a tension or a compressive force on all the plates uh, so that all the gaskets seal correctly and you get a very compact uh, space pattern. Uh, in addition, you will also see a nameplate on typical heat exchangers that goes into a lot of details of their rated temperatures, pressures and uh, things like that. Now, we will go to the detailed construction of these uh, plates. Uh, in the next segment. So let's go into a detail of some of these uh, heat transfer plates which are stacked in the heat exchanger. So these are metal plates typically out of a material like stainless steel or aluminium. If you see them in this orientation, you'll see how thin the plates are. So naturally once the plates are thin, uh, you have corrugations on them and the corrugations on the plates serve several different purposes. So first they give the plate some amount of rigidity. Uh, in addition, they increase the heat transfer area and finally, they improve turbulence across the plate. So all of these are factors which make uh, this exchanger a very uh, good heat exchanger. Now the other portion of this heat exchanger relates to these gaskets. The second component of these plates is what is referred to as the gasket. So that is uh, this uh, piece of rubber or other kinds of sealing material and it performs a very crucial function which is to prevent the liquids from intermixing or le leaking outside the heat exchanger and it is crucial that you have a certain amount of clamping force for these gaskets to seal. Uh, the other thing to observe is this peculiar pattern where certain ports, so you have four ports, these, these circular areas are called ports and once you stack plates on top of each other, these ports align and create a flow channel. Now what is important to note is that the gaskets in certain cases completely encircle the flow channel, so which means the fluid which is flowing through this port is not going to come out on this plate. But on the other hand, this second port doesn't have, it only has a gasket on the external side, so the fluid flowing through this port is actually going to come in on the heat exchanger. So the function of the gaskets on these plates is very crucial. Note that there is no pipe inherently in this sort of heat exchanger. The pipes are created by the way these ports are stacked uh, and in situ. Uh, also note that the sealing arrangement of each one of these four ports is different, right? So there are certain ports where you have this full circular gasket, so no liquid can come in and out. So that is this port out here as well as this port out here. On this plate, there will be no liquid coming out. On the other hand, this port here has this semicircular gasket and so liquid can actually come over the plates, flow in this direction and exit via this port. Now, if I remove this plate and show you the plate underneath it, carefully observe the gaskets on this plate, right? The arrangement is not exactly symmetrical, sort of it's a mirror, mirror image. So in this case, you don't have anything flowing out of this port, neither do you have, you have anything going into this port because these gaskets are completely circular. What you do have is the opposite set of ports now can have a liquid coming in and going out. And this sort of arrangement is what allows these exchanges to be created in countercurrent fashion and also other flow arrangements. And what is important to also note is that there will always be a different fluid on each side of this plate. So if the hot fluid is flowing on this side, the cold fluid will be in contact with the other side. So now that we have seen all the various parts of this experiment, let us just summarize what is the calculations that you are going to do. So basically there's two ways to estimate the heat transferred. One is in terms of the specific heat, so that will be MCP delta T, uh, knowing all of these parameters for the hot and cold fluid, you can estimate the heat which is being transferred. The second side is the rating calculation for the ex using the equation for the heat exchanger, which is Q equal to UA LMTD. So once you use that, you will be able to get another estimate on the heat transfer coefficient. So one of the goals of this entire exercise is to estimate the Reynolds number, the Prandtl number and come up with an estimate, two independent estimates of the heat transfer, overall heat transfer coefficient and compare them. 
So there are going to be certain uh, correction factors involved and one of one part of the whole exercise will be estimating the F factors and coming up with estimates for all that. And once once you do, you should be able to uh, compare the behavior of this specific uh, plate heat exchanger uh, to what you see reported in literature. For example, is it operating in the laminar regime, is it operating in the turbulent regime and what are the overall heat transfer coefficients and how do they compare with the uh, reported values. Uh, one thing that I will note is we are going to ignore any sort of fouling resistances, but we are not going to ignore the heat transfer resistance offered by the metal of the plate itself. So with that, I think you have a fairly good summary of the equipment, the setup, what kind of calculations you are going to do uh, and I look forward to you actually doing uh, the calculations during the experiment. Thank you.